when you wear a fucking tutu because that's easier to find than a pair of jeans. Looking around my apartment, I feel like the messiest princess ever. Let's talk about my most disappointing books of 2019. I already did my worst books of 2019, but to me, most disappointing is almost more painful because they're books that I had a high expectation of, but that just fell short. These are in no particular order. I'm just going to list them off and talk about them, and hopefully you'll figure out if you want to read them or not. The first book on this list is The Wife by Ella Fair Burke. This one was so disappointing because I loved so much of it. This is a thriller about a woman whose husband is accused of sexual assault, or well, sexual misconduct, sexual harassment. He is a teacher and a student accuses him. As well as later on, more women, I think at least one more woman, woman accuses him. I was so upset because I loved like the first third of this book. It felt very of the moment, it felt very um, relevant to today's society. They talked about Me Too, or they talked about the Me Too movement and the things men do that aren't okay in every day-to-day -day life, and I just, I really liked where this was going. Unfortunately, this book took a hard left turn. I would like the ending to this book on any other book, but on this book with this particular topic, it was insulting, frankly. I didn't like the message it sent, I didn't like the vibe you ended up with when you finished this book. It also just had a lot of really unnecessary bullshit in it. There was an entire backstory to the main character about how she was kidnapped when she was younger, and it had kind of nothing to do with anything really other than to have another twist aspect in the book that really had nothing to do with anything. Like, it did not matter. It was inconsequential. So, I didn't, once again, I didn't love that. <laughs> I will totally read more from Ella Fair Burke because I don't think she's a bad writer. I just, this book left a bad taste in my mouth. The next book I want to talk about is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. I wanted to love this so bad. I thought I was going to love this. Like, I thought for sure this was going to be a five-star read for me. I love teenage mystery stories, but this one just did not hit the mark for me. There's something about the writing that was super off for me personally. I just kept, I always, you know, when you're reading something in your head, it just wasn't flowing. Like the sentences kept having weird breaks in them and I just couldn't get the structure down when I was reading it. Like, I, that, does, that sounds so weird, but that was strange. I didn't particularly love the characters like I thought I would. Charlotte's character is obviously way more interesting than Jamie's character. Did I even mention what this is about? It's like a Sherlock retelling, kind of. I thought that they were going to have a more slow burn dynamic, but like they start flirting pretty quickly into this book. But the thing that to me disappointed me the most was the ending, because the only reason you, the reader, don't figure out who the killer is because it's because they leave out a crucial piece of information. And that crucial piece of information makes it super obvious who the killer is. And Charlotte knows this information, so being the genius that she is, she should have known right away who the killer was, but she didn't, and that makes me think she, she's kind of a shitty detective. <laughs> I already own book two and three in the series, so I'm still gonna finish it, or at least read more of it, but I was very disappointed in this, and it was quite a bummer. <laughs> the next book on my list is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. So this is Shonda McGuire's pen name. I read um, a couple of her Wayward Children's book this year and really enjoyed them. And with this book, I didn't even hate it. I just found it way too long. It meandered so much. This book is essentially about killer mermaids and an expedition crew to go find them. There was a somewhat large cast of characters, but only a couple of the characters actually mattered. It bounced back and forth between all these perspectives yet they kept saying the same things over and over again. They weren't giving us any new information. They were just giving this character's perspective on the situation that they were in. But the character's perspective of the situation where they were in was, oh fuck, we're screwed. And it just kept doing that throughout every character, and I was like, I don't know why I need to hear this 20 times. I thought if you took out like 100 pages out of the book, I probably would have loved this because I did like the story, I just found it so 
I mean, meandering is the best word. It just, it just kept going in circles and not really getting anywhere. It became obvious at a certain point that they should leave this stupid expedition and get the fuck out of there, and yet nobody does, and nobody can come up with a good reason as to why they're not leaving. Some of the characters were obviously, like, the good characters, and so many were clearly, like, the bad characters, and we never really got more depth to them. I just, I felt like this could have been so good, and unfortunately, it just wasn't for me. The next disappointing book on this list is The Chalk Man by C.J. Tudor. This became very popular this year, and it kind of reminded me that I owned it. This was essentially a murder mystery with two different timelines, you know, the one in the past, the one in the present. Um, it involved a group of kids who found a dead body in the woods when they were kids, I think, and then in the present, you know, I don't remember a lot about this. But the thing that I do remember is the big reveal, and it is one of my most hated tropes in horror movies or thrillers, mysteries, whatever. I've seen it many, many times, and once again, I just find it kind of insulting. I don't want to talk about what it is because then I'll be revealing things, but I hate it. I, d I also just wasn't like addicted to this book. I wasn't drawn into this book or these characters. They were fine. It was interesting, but the big reveal really ruined it for me, but honestly I'm not sure I would have loved this book regardless. Next book on this list is First Debt by Pepper Winters. This is the sequel to Debt Inheritance. It is a erotica novel, and it was quite a letdown from the first one. I really enjoyed the first one. I love a character who's just truly a villain. I probably shouldn't in a romance novel, but I do. I like a lot of dark romances and twisted romances and so when a character is just a shitty dude without any explanation I actually enjoy that because as soon as they try to humanize them it kind of ruins it for me and that's what happened in this book. It always happens when they start doing the dual perspective things in dark romances and sure enough that's what the second book did and I don't know I just started to not give a shit and there's so many more books in this series and I bought a bunch of them so now I have to read them but yeah the humanity ruined him. And also, not a lot happened. It was pretty slow freaking going. First Dead is about this man who inherits this woman. It's like this long-standing tradition between these two families. You just have to suspend your disbelief and buy into it. That doesn't bother me. I'm used to that with these dark eroticas, so that was fine. So the next thing on this list is the comic books Why the Last Man. This is about a world in which all men have died, and it's just like a world full of women left. This is like a really well-loved comic series and I just don't really understand why so far. I feel like all of the characters are really stupid and they all make really dumb decisions. The main character is incredibly irritating. He's just constantly like non-stop won't shut up about his girlfriend. I'm like, the apocalypse has basically happened. Will you give it a fucking rest? Your girlfriend is in goddamn Australia. Like, holy shit. I was also reading The Walking Dead at the same time and comparing the two, I guess, like without really meaning to, and I just like The Walking Dead so much more. I just wasn't getting anything from Why the Last Man. I know it's being made into a TV show, so maybe I'll like that more, but I just don't get the hype of these comics. The next book on this list is Blood of Eve by Pam Godwin. This is a sequel to whatever the first book was, I can't remember. Dead of Eve, I think? Sounds right. Basically, like, a post-apocalyptic book. It's actually the opposite of Why the Last Man. Eve is the last woman alive, the rest are all men, and there's a bunch of like aphid characters, or aphid creatures, who are killing everybody. Um, I've talked about this before, it's a very like stereotypical racist erotica that nobody should read, but I bought the first and second book at the same time, and there was an author's note at the beginning of the first book that talked about how the second book in the series was the raunchiest book she ever wrote. So I was like, hell yeah, I'm in. Then I read the first one, realized it was trash, and felt like I still had to read the second book anyways. It was not the raunchiest book I've ever read. And that's where the disappointment comes in. <laughs> and it was long. There was like 700 goddamn pages of this that I had to read thinking that it was just gonna get raunchier, and it didn't. It did not deliver. <laughs> The ending was fine and good, and I was happy that it ended in a place where I feel like I don't need to read the third book, which is fucking fantastic. 
it was an interesting premise for an erotica, but I've heard that El Candy has a series called Claimed that I think has generally the same idea, and I'm much more excited to try that one. The next book is another erotica called Claiming a Sleeping Beauty by Anne Rice. This is supposed to be like a classic in the BDSM community. I read it and was really liking the first like quarter of it, but man did it go downhill and nothing happened after that. The first quarter was interesting and good and yeah, I just like don't have a lot to say about this because just nothing happened and there was nothing to the character, there was nothing to any of the interactions between her and anybody else and it just basically sucked. <laughs> the next thing on my list is The Wicked and the Divine. It's also a comic book series. I don't know how to explain what it's about. I think it has a bunch of gods and stuff and that's my problem with it is I was so confused. I didn't understand what was happening at any given point. I think I only read like how much should I read? Maybe the first six issues or something, but like, I don't know what the premise is. <laughs> I just, I don't know, wasn't making sense in my mind. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Maybe I'll try it again, but I just couldn't get into it. And the last book on this list is A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. I was really, really excited about this because I love anything having to do with an exorcism. The Exorcist is one of my favorite movies. I actually have an exorcist poster really right there on that wall. But this book just didn't do it for me. First of all, I don't know if I'm just hard to scare at this point because I've watched like a trillion horror movies, but there's not like anything in this book that's scary, like at all. It's about a girl, or it's about a family. One of the daughters is having some issues and they decide to call in an exorcist because the dad is like hyper-religious all of a sudden. But while going through this, they also plan to film it. While going through this, they also agree to let a film crew come in and film a documentary about it. The book is recounted from the other daughter's point of view. She was a child when her sister went through this, and there's also like the timeline now where she talks about it where she's an adult. The timeline now? Completely unnecessary. Don't know why it was there. The blog was so frustrating. There are these blogger parts in the book where someone is blogging about the documentary and basically explaining to you what you're supposed to think about the book. Like it talks about the themes of the book and the story and just like spells out to you what this book is trying to say, which was just so annoying. Like you can't write a review of your own story in your book. <laughs> This isn't even a long novel and yet I could cut half of this shit out of this book and it would not matter. <laughs> I just found myself more annoyed than impressed and I will definitely still try out more of Paul Tremblay's work because I do think he's a good author. I just didn't like this book at all. So those were the 10 most disappointing books I read this year. Actually, I found another one. I'd also like to put in Ready Player One by Ernest Cline here. I don't know if I really expected a ton from it, but so many people had said so many good things that I was expecting something and I just didn't like it. The first like third of it I found incredibly irritating. The main character, hi kitty, are you gonna attack my tutu? Please don't. There was just a lot of like trivial facts thrown at you, which I mean I understand that this is a book about the love of pop culture, but I just found it so annoying. <laughs> It just felt like they were throwing out references for references sake. The second half of the book, or like the second two thirds of the book was better. It got less annoying in that way, but it still just wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting an underdog story when they pretty much did away with that from the start. All of a sudden he gets rich and buff and like he's not an underdog in the least. It was fine. It just wasn't what everyone hyped it up to be. Those are my 10 most disappointing books of the year. Actually, I think that's 11, but whatever. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll come back again soon. Bye.